Okay, this lesson for the Corne Project class will be brief, but it introduces, especially upcoming time of year when you start hearing about people making plans for Easter and all these things focused on the resurrection. So we can take a few verses here and break these apart. Look up the words, Acts 17, 31, where he said um, that the world be judged in righteousness in a man. And then I pick up here, in whom he ordained when he held a persuasion alongside to all men, when he raised up, you notice Anastasis, Stasis is stand, so stood up, when he raised, up, raised him up out from dead ones. So this term pistine, when you look that up, it's persuasion, which is quite remarkable. That's the most persuasive event. And yet it appears in the Gospel of John where Jesus said, I lay down my life so that I might take it again. So one of the miracles, signs that had been written and remain on record in order that a person might believe, trust Jesus Christ, his decrees, for example, where he himself said, everyone who believes into me is already having everlasting life. And we also know there are a lot of people who say, oh, yeah, I believe death, burial, resurrection, or I believe God created the heavens and earth. But then they don't trust Jesus Christ for everlasting life, which appears to, in practical terms, that purpose for which the resurrection in form of persuasion, it was to persuade someone that we can trust what Jesus said. So just because someone believes a means of persuasion, some people have said they believe in miracles and yet they practice a gospel or support a gospel of works for salvation. So they say, I believe Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, but they don't trust Jesus for everlasting life. And you see the contradiction. Uh, when someone is raised from the dead, death has no power over them. That would be eternal life, everlasting. And in him, we have it. Acts 26, 28, but the Agrippa declared towards the Paul, in a short synopsis, you are persuading me to come to be a Christian. Now, earlier in the text, I think it's verse 23, he said that Christ should suffer and be the first to rise from the dead and um, testify this to the people and give light to the Gentiles. So he was showing the uh, relevance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ to both the people, the Jewish people, out from whom Jesus said would come salvation, and to the Gentiles. Well, when he gets to Agrippa, Agrippa says, replying to Paul, because Paul had already said, um, you are believing the prophets. You're already believing them. So Paul then spoke of the resurrection, which he said is that short synopsis that was persuading him. So here we see the raised from the dead is a persuasion. Here this man is being persuaded. And then, of course, 1 Corinthians 15, 2 through which, speaking of the message of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, through which also you all are being saved, passive always, by which certain word or decree, the same meaning there, I correctly announced, sorry, to you all, since determined condition, you all are holding according to, notice this, you all are ho holding according to, which certain word I correctly announced to you all, unless he says stipulated, except in vain you all believed. Now he was pointing out here, first he's talking about being saved. We have another text where we're fathered through the gospel. And here he's speaking of these people who are holding according to which word, you see, by which word they're saved, but that's also the correct announcement concerning that. So it's interesting that people would point to this, and it's very striking to see people say, well, I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, and if I believe that, then I'm a Christian, and then they deny the gospel of, let's say, justification out from faith alone out from the faithfulness of Jesus Christ alone, Galatians 2.16, or they add works to the gospel, or as we learned recently, a Protestant, well, a man who's parrots Protestants, but now he went so far as his name's um, John Piper, as late as 2017 said, well, faith will get you justified, 
before God. You'll stand right before God, but it won't get you into heaven. So whatever he's tumbled off into, it's another gospel. It's a different gospel. But you can read this and see this, that someone that would say that they have been persuaded by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, someone like Agrippa saying he is already being persuaded by the resurrection in that process of being persuaded to come to be a Christian. And then those who would say that, well, if I just believe that God raised him from the dead, then that's enough. The problem is there was a point to it. There was a point to it. And we'll just go back here. So I'm suggesting that you can notice very easily in the Bible that if someone believed in vain, it's because they did not believe the intended purpose for which it was to persuade them. So you have a blessed day and enjoy this lesson, because if you've been persuaded by the one who was raised from the dead and by the event of being raised from the dead and the miracles of raising Lazarus and healing the blind and all that the gospel of John spoke to, then you trust him. That is, if you have been persuaded for the purpose of that to the end that you would trust him for everlasting life, believe that he's the Christ and as one who's believing that. You're having an everlasting life. Then you get what this is about. So you have a blessed day. Enjoy this lesson.